Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Our Savior's is a congregation of people forgiven in Christ whose mission is to proclaim the good news and connect faith to everyday life. We are glad you have chosen to worship with us on the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Our traditional worship will begin in a few moments. Good morning. The Lord be with you. Thank you. It is a great pleasure to gather together with all of you on this beautiful day that the Lord has made. It is good to come together and worship, and I hope you had a wonderful 4th of July celebration this past week as we gave thanks for all the blessings we have as a nation. And now as we come together as God's people in worship, we give thanks for the many blessings that God gives to us through His Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Welcome to all of you, especially to our guests and to those of us, or those of you who join us via television. It's a great pleasure to have you here with us in worship. Before we do begin our time in worship, though, I'd like to highlight just a few announcements that you find printed on the inside of your bulletin. There are many things that are happening here at Our Saviors during the summer months, and one of which you may have noticed in your bulletin insert. Beginning on Tuesday, July 24th, from 6.30 to 8 o'clock p.m. in the conference room, join Pastor Randy for a six-week study of the book of Ephesians. Check out the details in your bulletin and come join the conversation with Pastor Randy. This week on Wednesday, July 11th, is our Mestival Summer Blast Celebration for July. Beginning at 5 p.m., come celebrate the evening with food and fun and games and outdoor worship at 6.30. Also, please note that the car show that was rained out in June will be held this night as well on uh, this Wednesday. So please bring your classic car or motorcycle to the south parking lot by 5 o'clock. Look for the orange cones as to where you are to display your, and park your vehicles. It's going to be a fun time together in worship and in fun this Wednesday. Also this week, Lutheran Outdoors Day Camp will take place here at Our Saviors from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. This program begins tomorrow, Monday, July 9th, and runs through Thursday. And you can still register your kids who have completed kindergarten through fifth grade uh, in the gathering place this morning or by uh, going to oslchurch.com forward slash children. Our, our Savior's organ recital series returns this month on Wednesdays from 1215 to 1244 p.m. followed by a light lunch in the gathering place. The schedule of musical guests is listed in your bulletins and come enjoy a nice time in the middle of your day on Wednesdays. OSL Day at the Park happens on August 12th with one worship at 10 o'clock at the McKinnon Park Band Shell. And then plan to spend the afternoon together at the Birdcage as the Sioux Falls Canaries host the Fargo Moorhead Redhawks. And remember, Pastor Andy's throwing his pitch, so uh, make sure you come and cheer him on as he uh, begins his baseball career with the Canaries. <laughs> Tickets are available at the Information Center. You can pick them up today or at the church office during the week. I believe that is all the announcements I have to share with you. We begin our time in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand and let us sing our opening hymn.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please join me as we turn our hearts to confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Trusting in God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sins against God and one another. Eternal God, our Creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from the proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and strength, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Promise-making God, in our baptism you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles, that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. from the book of Ezekiel. A voice said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, 
mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, who, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them. You shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear. For they are a rebellious house. They shall know that, they, that there has been a prophet among them. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, 
except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, I want to begin today with a pop quiz. And Tim, by the way, it is going to be graded, so take note. What's the mission statement of our, our Savior's Lutheran Church? Literally last night I asked that question and people rolled their eyes like, oh shoot, I don't know the answer to that one. It's printed in your bulletin every week. You've got it right in front of you. It reads, our Savior's is a people forgiven in Christ whose mission is to proclaim Christ and nurture faith that connects with everyday life life. Now we tend to put a lot of emphasis here on the connecting faith with everyday life portion, but equally as important is that bit about proclaiming Christ. Our mission as forgiven people of God is to proclaim Christ. In this sense, I think we are exactly the same as the 12 disciples whom Jesus sent out two by two. You see, the moment that each of us was baptized, Jesus sent us on a mission as full partners with him in God's ministry of reconciliation and healing to, among other things, as our baptismal rite says, proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed. Many of us, though, aren't all that excited about embracing this part of our baptismal identity, right? In fact, to some of us, suffering through a root canal or a colonoscopy might be easier than talking to someone else about Jesus. But think about it this morning from the, pers the perspective of the story in Mark's Gospel. You see, Jesus, by the time we get to chapter 6, has already, in Mark's telling of the story, calmed a storm, saved a demon-possessed man who lived in the cemetery by sending the evil spirit into a nearby herd of pigs, healed a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years, and raised a 12-year-old girl from the dead. Word was getting around Galilee that not only could Jesus teach like none of their rabbis, but he could also do some pretty amazing things like no one else. And yet, Mark tells us, Jesus could do no deed of power in Nazareth, in his own hometown, because his homies, do they still say that word? His friends and family simply couldn't believe that Jesus, of all people, could legitimately do and say the things he was doing and saying. He didn't have the pedigree, and he certainly didn't have the training. And as a result of their unbelief, Jesus' power was nearly squelched. He was only able to heal a few sick people. 
Now, think about that for just a moment. Could that detail in the story suggest to us that you and I are participants in God's work in the world to a degree far greater than we typically imagine. I'm not trying to suggest that human will or effort somehow limits God's power to save. Salvation is God's gig alone, and in the end it will be God's powerful love that will reconcile and heal all of creation. But what Scripture seems to be teaching us here is that day after day after day, you and I are faced with decisions about how we will participate in God's work to bless and care for creation. Will we be fully on board as vessels of God's love and healing, sharing our faith and the difference that Jesus makes in our lives with those around us? Or... Will we, will we refuse to accept or simply ignore that portion of our baptismal identity? Depending on the decisions that we make, we may find ourselves on the side of the Nazarenes, Jesus' own family and friends, whose unbelief and closed-mindedness and apathy ultimately got in the way of Jesus' ministry of teaching and healing. To those of us who balk at our mission of proclaiming Christ, is this how we want to be known and remembered? As people who welcomed God's gifts of grace and forgiveness for ourselves while choosing to limit the expansion of that grace in the world by giving in to our sense of bashfulness and embarrassment. Is that what we want? Listen. Just as Jesus sent out the disciples two by two, so also he sends us out as full partners in this business of proclaiming the good news, partners with God in this work of reconciling the world to God. You see, not only are we empowered by the Holy Spirit who lives within us, who takes what we have to offer, whatever that may be, in this enterprise of proclaiming Christ, and then uses it to bring the blessings of God to bear on other people's lives, but we are also partners one with another, working side by side with a common mission to proclaim Christ and nurture faith that connects with everyday life. In other words, we have what we need to do what God calls us to do. We don't need to achieve a certain status in this life to be qualified as a witness to the goodness of God. We don't need to attain a certain degree of wealth or power in this world to be seen as legitimate or valid ministers of grace. No, we travel lightly out into the mission field, carrying little more than a believing heart and a life that's been transformed by God's love, trusting with every ounce of our being that God's power will be most clearly seen and experienced by others, not in our credentials, not in our ability to articulate the gospel, but rather in our weakness and in our utter dependence upon the Holy Spirit working in us and through us. Maybe that's what moved Mother Teresa to say once, you only know Jesus is all you need when Jesus is all you have. So what does that end up looking like for the average OSLer? How does this partnership with God in the work of proclaiming Christ and nurturing faith play out in everyday life? 
Well, to answer that question, I want to give you two illustrations, two stories. The first is a story about a man named Hugh Thompson, a relatively uneducated man who found himself speaking one day at the commencement exercises of Emory University when he was one of several who was being awarded an honorary degree. You see, he had chosen not to finish college when he was a student, but rather enlist in the Army, and it's there where he became a helicopter pilot. As he spoke at commen commencement, he shared a story from his experience in Vietnam. It was March 16, 1968, he said, and I was flying a routine patrol when I happened to fly over the village of My Lai just as American troops under the command of Lieutenant William Cauley were slaughtering dozens of unarmed villagers, old men and women, and even children, he recounted. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So I set my helicopter down between those troops and the remaining villagers, and I told my tail gunner to take aim at those American troops, and then I ordered them, those soldiers, to stop killing unarmed civilians. His bold actions that day saved dozen, dozens of lives. It almost got him court-martialed. But eventually, those actions earned him the soldier's medal from the U.S. Army. But as he held that audience in rapt attention, Hugh Thompson began speaking about his faith, using very simple words, speaking of what his parents had taught him as a child to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Captivated by his amazing but simple witness, the audience of graduates and their families leapt to their feet when he finished speaking and gave him a resounding ovation. It was an amazing moment. Secondly, another story. This one maybe is closer to home for many of us. It's a story about a woman who belonged to the Episcopal Church in her community and worked as a clerk in the local bookstore. When she arrived at work one morning, she encountered a man who was dressed like a Hasidic Jew, traditional outfit. After turning on the lights at the bookstore, she politely asked, may I help you? And he said, yes. I would like to know about Jesus. So dutifully, she guided him upstairs to the shop's section of books about Jesus and then turned to go back downstairs and finishing or finish opening the store. But he called her back and said, no, 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 no. I don't want any more books about Jesus. I want to know what you believe. The woman's Episcopal soul, or could we say Lutheran, we could insert that there, shivered in that moment. But she took a deep breath and began telling him everything that she could think of about this one she knew as Lord and Savior. Forgiven people of God, members and friends of our Savior's Lutheran Church, I want you to hear loudly and clearly today your words and your actions matter in this world. You have been chosen by God in your baptism to be the people through whom God's work of blessing and healing creation will find its way into every corner of this world, into every nook and cranny of this community. But the question that each of us needs to answer is this. Will we be an impediment to God's reign of love? 
Or will we be a willing and eager partner in this holy work of proclaiming Christ and nurturing faith that connects with everyday life? Will you pray with me? God, it's easier said than done. But we ask this morning that you would grant us the courage we need to accept your invitation to be your partner in mission. <clears throat> that your widespread love, that your endless grace might be known by all through our deeds and our words. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, kids, you want to come up and join me for Kid Talk? Come on up, kids. Come on up and have a seat up here. Maybe over on this side on the top step would be the best spot for all of us to gather. Come on up. Good to see you. Coming from all directions. Nice tie. I like it. Very good. Have a seat. Have a seat. Oh, another tie. Another tie. Must be tie day. I, I tie. Good to see you. Hey, how are you all doing? Did you have a nice 4th of July? 
Good, good. It was fun, wasn't it? Fun to get together with family, to spend some time together. Gonna, whoops, I'm kind of shorting out here now and then. I was thinking about family one, the other day when I was kind of going through some stuff. And, and I was, uh, well, I was looking forward to the 4th of July and the celebration that we had together to see everybody. Well, you know, I, I had this in my sock drawer. And I wondered if any of you have ever, you have a sock drawer? I got a sock drawer. You guys have a sock drawer? Yeah. Well, I keep important stuff in my sock drawer. And this is one thing here. You know what this is? A harmonica. What do you think there's anything special about this harmonica? It plays music, yeah. Yeah, pretty cool, isn't it? Seen a harmonica before? Yeah, okay. Well, you know, there's something about this one. If you look at it, it looks just like a harmonica, but it's important to me. Because you know why? This harmonica my dad picked up when he was serving in the army in World War II, when he was a long way from home, and he was feeling kind of lonely, and he couldn't carry a tuba or a piano or anything like that with him, so he thought, you know, I'm going to get me a harmonica, and he did. And he carried this with him, and he talked about times when he played the harmonica when he was in the army, when he was in World War II. And then when he got home, Every once in a while, Dad used to play the harmonica for us around the table. So now, now what do you think of this harmonica? Is there anything special about this harmonica? Yeah, this is my dad's. And this is a keepsake. This is not just a harmonica. It reminds me of my love for him and all the things that he did and the things that he would do for our family when he played music on the harmonica to make us happy. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you look at something to begin with, you don't think it's really anything special. But once you start to think about it a little bit, you realize, wow, that is neat. Kind of like the story today about Jesus. Jesus, Pastor Randy was talking about, uh, he was going all throughout the countryside, healing people and telling them God's love and doing amazing things. But when he got home, what happened to Jesus? Do you remember? What happened to Jesus when he got home? They kind of looked at him and said, eh, it's just Jesus. We remember him. He's the carpenter's son. There's nothing special about Jesus. And he couldn't do anything for them because they didn't believe in him. And they didn't trust him. He just looked like another person. You ever feel that way? Just like another person. Nothing special about me. There's people all over that look just like me, and there's nothing special about me. And sometimes we can think that, uh, you know, oh, shoot, I'm kind of lost in the crowd. And people sometimes will treat us like that even, don't they? They kind of think, ah, that's just another, just another kid, or that's just another pastor, or that's just another mom or dad or grandma or grandma, or grandma or just another person. But I want you to think about this harmonica. And when you first saw it, you thought it was just another harmonica until you learned the story. They thought Jesus was just another until Jesus reminded them of who he was God's son Jesus was there to save us to heal us and to bring us hope and then oh boy people began to realize he was more than just another person another carpenter's son when people look at you they should do that too you know what I'm saying because you're not just another child You are a child of God. You belong to God. God loves you. God claimed you right there in the baptism. And he said, you're mine forever, and you are very special to me. So we should never think that we're just another person in the crowd because God said, you are not. You are my beloved child. And I'll give my life for you because I love you that much. That's how special you are. And he did. So think about that, okay? You're not just another person. You're a child of God. Let's pray.
Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that we aren't just one in the crowd. You see each and every one of us for who we are, your precious child. Thank you, God, for your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, kids. Good to see you. Good to see you. You can go back to your seats now. I'm going to run back up to the altar. Whoa, there they go. And I'm going to invite the congregation to please stand as we confess our faith in who we are and who God is using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Growing in faith and discipleship, let us pray for the church, the world, and for all people according to their needs. Let us pray. Lord God, equip all your faithful people for work of mission. Lead us as we join hands with our partners in ministry. Help us to speak boldly of your promises without reservation or fear. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we pray for those who have experienced recent flooding and other adverse weather conditions, that they might have hope and support during this time of recovery. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we pray for the children and adult leaders trapped in the cave in Thailand, that they may be rescued safe and sound, that you would look after them and their rescuers, all the adult leaders, everyone involved, and bring them safely back to home. Bring comfort to the families and friends of the rescue worker who had lost his life in his efforts to rescue. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, when the nations are rebellious, raise up prophets and leaders to proclaim your way of justice. Provide for the needs of refugees and immigrants and asylum seekers and exiles. Protect all who live in areas of war and conflict. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your grace is sufficient to bring hope into the midst of the darkness of the world. Restore hope to those suffering in hardship or persecution or calamities. Strengthen those who struggle in mind, body, or spirit. And be especially with the hospitalized, including Pastor Pete Peterson and those whom we name in our hearts before you. Be also with the family of Harry Krieger, whose funeral was this week, and with the family of Mike Collins as they mourn his death. May your spirit bring healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, renew our commitment to the work of hospitality. Help us to offer a caring welcome to visitors and to those returning to church. Help us to be living examples of your grace and your generosity. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you equip disciples throughout the ages to proclaim your kingdom. Lead us by faith until every weakness of this world has been made perfect in the power of your everlasting glory. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we lift to you these prayers and the prayers of our hearts, trusting in your everlasting love and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Share God's peace. You may be seated. At this time, we receive our offering, and I invite kids, come on up and grab a bucket, and let's get the noisy offering. Kids, come on up and help.
pray. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it, our hearts to embrace it, and our lives to live it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We remember it was on the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Come, for all things are now ready. Jesus 
rise. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, that we may feast on your great Thank love. you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.